Good morning, everyone. Welcome in this panel of February for the Coworking Europe app. We are super excited to have a wonderful panel um, to address a topic which is became, becoming hotter and hotter uh, in Europe. And uh, it, it, is, it is about the... It, it is... Sorry, I have, we have a small problem. Sorry, so sorry, we have we had a small technical problem. Um, the the as what I was mentioning, we are super happy to address the topic of um, co-working and shopping mall or shopping centers. Uh, we see that more and more there is. Um, we are speaking about shopping center turning themselves into a, a mix of different services and not only for the retail. And the other opposite side, we know that co-working operators are more and more looking for suburbs area, different locations and a shopping center, which is a living area, um, whereas co-working space tells about, tell about themselves that they are um, more than a workspace, but also a living area. We see that there is a convergence between them. And we have some of the uh, most knowledgeable people in, in this field of shopping center now uh, with us. Um, we have Karen Meteor, who is the head of the Department of Office at ECE Marketplace uh, from Germany. And you are based in Hamburg, I think, uh, Caroline. Uh, we have Clément Goutanier, from, who is the um, innovation and business developer uh, with, of, of Merchalis. Uh, Merchalis is one of the most important uh, shopping center uh, operator and owner in France, and you have more than 40 centers uh, under your su supervision. And then we have Tom Whittingham from Civils, uh, who is the director of research for uh, retail and leisure at Civils. And you are based, I think, in Manchester or in London? Uh, I'm based between Manchester and London. Oh, yeah. I was almost right. Perfect. Okay, just to introduce uh, the discussion um, and, make, and, and, and most of all the panels, I will uh, let you. Um, introduce yourself uh, during during uh, uh, some time to tell us about you and and your respective uh, um, uh, responsibilities and and um, functions. So, Karen, maybe can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and EC? Yes, right. Thank you for the invitation. Caroline Meader. I'm working in the real estate business since uh, 17 years now and at ECE, which is known as a company uh, developing and also managing shopping centers in, in Europe. We are a family owned um, company and now um, split it in uh, different companies. I'm working now for the ECE marketplaces, which will focus only on the shopping centers. ECE was not only shopping center developer in the past, but also had a um, wide range in developments in other asset classes as office, hospitalities, living, and logistic. And in, um, in my department, I started as, as a lawyer at ECE and uh, changed then to the development team, which was responsible for these asset classes um, abroad from the shopping centers. I'm now, since 11 years, responsible for the non-retail portfolio in the ECE in our German shopping centers, where we have about 180,000 square meters office areas, so non-retail areas, which were situated on um, separated floors, not in the shopping center, in, in most of the cases, not related to the retail, to the retail business, but near of uh, the shopping center. And from that experience on, I had on office contracts, office um, leasing processes. Also, we have some, some co-worker in our non-retail portfolio, uh, like Regis, um, for example. It's, um, I'm now involved since we started our discussions or internal discussions and reflections about the shopping center of the future, how it would look like if we see the, 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 station, the stationary trade and, and e-commerce competition now. We started our new um, department and so new internal teams to discuss how can mixed usages, so no non-retail usages, be part of the shopping center. And one um, topic we are dealing with is the co-working co -working branch. How does it uh, fit in our shopping centers and could be um, for, the, for the future a good package to be retail, um, a retail and shopping mall and also a co-working space. 
yeah, that's why I'm here. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Hello, Clément. Can you tell us more about Mercy Alice and yourself? Uh, hi, everyone. So my name is uh, Clement. Uh, I'm working for Mercialis. So you, you said it, uh, Jean-Yves, Mercialis is one of the, uh, of the biggest uh, French uh, real estate companies specialized in shopping centers. We own about uh, you know, 40, 50 shopping centers in France, mainly in the uh, big, uh, <clears throat> big cities, not Paris, not Lyon, not Marseille, but all the other big cities. We are in Bretagne, in the Southeast, on the Côte d'Azur. Uh, we have big, uh, big shopping centers here. So our job is quite uh, traditional, you know, we rent space to uh, retail companies and my job at Mercedes, we created a new department, the innovation department I ran uh, yeah, two or three years ago. And um, our strategy, our goal is to bring new activities to the shopping center to consolidate our existing model. So my job is to figure out what could be the perfect fit to be added to our retail uh, activities. So we could talk about um, health center, we could talk about fitness center, uh, sport activities, co-working uh, spaces is uh, one of them. We also bring new e-commerce activities. So uh, my, my, uh, my, my job and my objective is to, to find what could bring more people to the shopping centers and to consolidate the existing model. And co-working spaces is a, uh, one big development for us that we have tested in the last year. Uh, among other projects and it is so far maybe the most uh, booming one because we mm. attracted many more uh, co-workers than what we expected and so it is now one of our uh, one of our main uh, uh, mm. main activities that we we plan to develop uh, uh, more rapidly in the in the years. We'll come back to that, but one very important thing is that you choose to do it yourself. So it's not that you partner exactly. up with an existing brand. You said, okay, we will create our own service and, and brand. Can you remind us the brand of the, of the co-working service you have? Yeah, so the, we, we, the brand we created is called Cab Cowork. Uh, in, in fact, when we started, we you know, hesitated. What do we have to do? Do we start with uh, an existing operator? Do we do it by ourselves? We were planning on opening two spaces at the time. So we own two spaces, one in uh, Angers and one in uh, Grenoble today, about uh, 300, uh, 300 square meters and uh, 30 workstations. But given the size of the space, we thought that we could maybe try it by ourselves at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we wouldn't have done the same choice if it was you know, something with uh, 100 workstations. So we say, okay, let's try it with the existing, existing staff to you know, generate synergies and let's see where it goes. And the result so far, uh, less than a year after the, the opening, is that both of our work, uh, co-working spaces are, are full. We have uh, above 90% uh, occupancy rate. So we're going to continue to do it by ourselves. And if maybe we'll uh, be, uh, if we open maybe a bigger one, we plan to open maybe a much bigger um, co-working space in another city. Maybe we'll see if it's, uh, if it's required to go with a third-party operator. So we, we could do both. Okay. So two spaces are in operation now out of 40, 40 to 50 centers, shopping yeah, centers. Yeah, and here. we have uh, four developments coming with an opening in the end of uh, 2021. Okay, perfect. Uh, hi, Tom. Um, so you are the researcher, so you know about this shopping centers um, challenges that, uh, that we, we see in the market. Um, and you investigated indeed why co-working could be an option for, for the diversification of a shopping center. So maybe you, you told us about some numbers and some facts. Um, can, can you give us your, your, your vision on that? Maybe? Yeah, sure. So, um, so I work for uh, Savills, which is an international uh, property advisory. Uh, offices all the way across Europe um, and I've sort of spent the last 20 years advising retailers, landlords, developers and all things retail from store expansion strategies, shopping centre visibility, supermarket performance and one of the things that we spend a lot of time looking at is vacancy rates mm. and it's really become very apparent over the course of the last decade that vacancy rates are not getting any better across the sector and in fact they're getting worse um, E-commerce, particularly in the UK, is around about 20%. Last year, it shot up to about 
uh, probably up to about 25%. And I know this is a trend that's being seen, uh, you know, across the whole continent. And we're pre, now pre COVID. Pre COVID, we're about 20%. Post COVID, we think about 25%. Yeah, so a significant increase. But these are things that we were anticipating happening anyway. And um, we are currently, again, this is a UK position, but I can give that as a perspective for what's happening elsewhere. We're currently about 1.42 million square metres of vacant floor space. And we reckon that by the end of the decade, we're at about 30 million square metres of redundant retail floor space. So it's become very apparent that we need to do something about it. So I've spent the last five years starting to build a, a sort of a new area really within Savills around about repurposing of retail space. And it's tremendously exciting. We're seeing huge challenges within retail, but actually what we're, what we're now seeing is an opportunity to fix some of the mistakes of the past. We're thinking about ways of rationalizing and improving retail places uh, to address other needs that are created from over expansion. So my passion is really about curated mixed-use spaces that serve better social value but still fulfill the financial expectations of investors and other key stakeholders and that's key and really repurposing is about bringing other uses into a particular retail place they could be a whole range of different things they could be residential offices life sciences uh, education health um, and workplace has a big part to play but it's all about breathing um, life back into shopping malls through social value, increasing footfall, multi-day activities and a synergy of uses that work well together. Because I think the property industry has been guilty of creating uh, asset class islands. So you built a retail scheme or you built an office scheme or you built a residential scheme. And increasingly, we're recognising the need to kind of blend all of those things together together. Um, to create something that actually serves a greater need. And co-working is a really, really important part to play in that. Um, we reckon that um, of that redundant floor space, about 3 million square metres is within unit sizes that are 500 square metres or bigger. And actually co-working spaces can potentially work in these sort of relatively sort of middle, mid-sized units. Mm -hmm. And in the UK, 150 towns have over 5,000 square metres of these larger units so that you can start to see how there's a huge opportunity from this problem everywhere. This isn't just about London, Paris, Berlin. It's everywhere has an opportunity to create more vibrant spaces of which co-working is part of the solution. That, that's part of the, uh, of the fix you are uh, referring to, that um, this island's that needs to converge to something which is more blended. And uh, that's what you, ref you were referring to when you said that it was an opportun opportunity to fix it. Yeah, but I mean, the, the problem with any kind of uh, single use asset is it's not very resilient. So the markets go up and down. But of course, if you bring in lots of different alternative uses, they're all performing in different ways at different parts of the economic cycle, but they also work together. You bring in a medical center and you need a pharmacy and a convenience store, you bring in education and you need uh, a gym. And you know these things kind of work well together. And what we've got to look at with co-working is the way that our working trends are changing. You know, pre-pandemic, 80% of office workers said that they would plan to work at home one day or less. Mm -hmm. And in the post-pandemic situation, and I know we're yet to see the, the true outcome here, but it looks like 80% are saying that they will want to continue to work at home two days or more. So that's a shift of between 20 and 40%. Even if we just stick at one day a week, it's a 20% shift. And 25% um, in town centres is driven by workforce, but, it doesn't, but, it, but that then is relocating to where those people live. And I think what we've got to think about is the benefits of working from home are that you have better work-life balance, potentially, except I'm sure that we've all felt that there's a less of a distinction between our work and our home life. And so the obvious solution is working in a flexible co-working environment close to where we live, because then we get the 
um, the collaboration and we get the social aspect. We get mm. the immunity from coffee shops and everything that's around those. Um, and I think that's where it's going to go. Well, uh, Caroline, so when we discussed to, to, to prepare the, the, this talk, um, we, you mentioned that from your, um, your analysis, no more shopping center will be built in Europe in the coming future. So you have to repurpose your shopping centers and in the, indeed to invent something new. You are still thinking out um, your strategy in terms of co-working, but can you maybe start with explaining why us why, why you think that shopping center is something, at, 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 at least the way it used to be uh, so far, is maybe something of the past and you are now reinventing it yourself at ECE. Mm -hmm. Yes, we see the, the development, as, as Tom said, for the shopping center, that there's um, a retail business not increasing yet. So we need more, um, more or less, um, or less, less shops uh, in one center. We have a few amount of centers with about 200 uh, shops. Um, and we see that we couldn't fill them in, uh, in relationship between uh, e-commerce and stationary trades. The shops will be smaller. And it's not these, as you see in Germany, the, the development of Kaufhof and Galleria um, and Karstadt. This, this is a development uh, which um, has a deep impact on our shopping centers too. Um, in the situation now, we see that we have to, to think about the retail business on, in a smaller way, but it will be remain the key of, of our centers. That, that's why we think we have to, to search for add-ons for the retail channels, for the retail shopping, um, to give uh, life in our centers to, to be, um, because we have these good plots in the city centers, um, with, with, which were very effective for people to go to. Um, but we need to have uh, usages in that center to, to be attractive. As uh, we see, you're not going to one um, real estate to do shopping. You, if as customer you have you need experience, so we have to to create customer experience for for our clients, and um, from the the our approach to to uh, think about reusages and remodeling of the shopping centers depends on on the situation of the center where it is situated. It is in big cities or it is in smaller cities. It is also always a difference, and it's. Um, what Clemence uh, said, there are huge um, opportunities. You can think about health, you can think about fitness, you can send more leisure and entertainment. Co-working is one part, but at the end we have to, to, to try to find the, the good mix up for each uh, location to have an attractive place um, for customers to come to us, to do shopping as well, but also to stay for long, longer days. Um, and at the end, co-working, that's our approach to that. We see also that there's frequency advantages for our shopping centers, if we can establish these co-working models into shopping centers. Um, but we see from, from, from different perspectives, we have now the, um, the customer side. Um, we see customers coming in our shopping center to to do some some hours of work, two or three hours staying in cafeterias or something like that. Um, they they are always uh, reporting us that they need more privacy, and also the, the the operator of the coffee shop says, "I'm not really happy about these clients because they are only drinking one coffee and sitting there for two hours." Um, so that is that is a need we have in, from our customers to stay in, in a private uh, environment in our shopping centers. And this could be an opportunity to have co-working models, co-working operators for that situation. That is also a more um, more. Um, you're not not as difficult for us because you have for these usages not these work regulation uh, what we have in Germany with very strong authorities to say you have to have natural illuminated light you have you know, spaces enough to for your employees for that client who's coming for two or three hours it's it's easier to uh, have co-working models and operate operate small areas um, with that mm. and the others um, we have is our uh, perspective. Also, is, this is that companies um, who need flexible workspace for their employees, that would be a huge amount of area. It's about perhaps about 2,000 square meter or 5,000 square meter like we work. But that is for us an office development, which we have to integrate in 
in, um, in a shopping center. It is more difficult to switch retail areas, which are really planned to be shopping and not to be office space uh, and remodel them in, in, in office spaces. And the question what Tom said is, is, is there an interdependence of these um, usages at the end? Or if certain column we have, the health column also, the co-working and also other leisure and entertainment work this together, only together, or does it fit to our values we need for the investor also if you have a single perspective on, on one of these packages? Um, that is what, what we think about. So, How do so, they re relate the usages together? So you're still, um, you, your, your reflection is still ongoing and you mm -hmm. told me that you still we're not sure whether you would go uh, the mercialist model with creating your own brand or service or partner up with uh, an existing operators that maybe are on one location or all your shopping centers. That's, that's where you are now. Yes, in most of the cases, we are not owner of our shopping centers. We're only the, the manager and operator. And so that's something, a difference to be operator is and would be or could be a case in the future for us, but it's not what we focus on now. Okay, perfect. Um, Clément, that, that's something you, you mentioned um, as well, that your, your, your co-working space for the moment still, you said it's not 100 desks for the moment, but you could figure out to go to go to grow bigger. But you are also seeing and looking for synergies with the other yeah. occupier of the centers. Yeah. That's what you were mentioning that you you were working more and more on pop up stores uh, possibilities, and the people opening those pop up stores could also work from the co working space. That and there is this idea that it's not only a, uh, layers of shops or layer of activities that you have in your building, but really something you try to mingle in um, together. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I ju um, just before talking about the synergies, I would just like to go back one second on the uh, cities we were talking about. It, it, there was an interesting, interesting point. Um, at Mercedes, we don't talk about the main cities. I will talk about France, but not Paris, not Lyon, because mm -hmm. In these cities, the uh, co-working market is already overcrowded with really big actors who have spaces that are, you know, premium spaces that it's really difficult to compete with. And there are a lot of them opening every month. In Paris and Lyon, for instance. Yeah, Paris, Lyon, Marseille. It's quite, quite yeah. difficult to enter this market when you are a new operator like us. You know, we are not specialized in this, so, so it's difficult, really competitive. And, and uh, the, the costs are, are really high. But... I've been myself to visit a lot of cities in France. We can talk about uh, Grenoble, about Brest, about Quimper, about uh, Annecy, about uh, maybe Bordeaux, Toulouse, you know, so second tier cities. When you go there, when you visit the co-working spaces there, you realize this is that this is a, a totally different market. You know, the, the quality is not the same, the space is not the same. It's really traditional, you know. Sometimes these people, they have a space which they were using for I don't know why, and they transformed it into a co-working space, but it's not, it's different level of, uh, of services. So the way we approached it, we said, okay, if we arrive in this city with something new, with, you know, new furniture, things as basic as that, uh, with a price at the market level, we will be competitive the very first second. And that's what we, we've seen. So. The, you know, it, it's really important to be about, okay, which cities we are talking about. And sometimes in this city, when we look at the competition in Grenoble, when we enter, there were like three co-working spaces, only three. You go to Angers, only one. Uh, but other cities, much more difficult because we have to find the right solution. When we talk about mixed use spaces, it cannot be the same answer in every city. Okay, in one city, you open a gym, not in the other one because there is already a big gym on the other side of the road. Co-working space is the same thing. Uh, let's talk about Tours, for instance, which is one of the cities we're looking at. You have many, uh, like 10 uh, co-working spaces in the very center next to the train station. So you can say, okay, it's difficult to uh, approach this market, but if our location, our shopping centers, most of the time are located on the direct suburbs, you know, next to the highway, things like this. So it can be interested to uh, say, okay, let's uh, propose a different service to the, uh, to the coworkers in tour. Okay, we will not offer the base spaces in the uh, right center next to the train station, but if someone has to take his car 
has to find a parking lot, has to find you know something accessible, he will come to us. So mm. we, we have to look carefully at the cities. Sorry for this. Um... No, no, it's really, really interesting. But just on that, um, it means that, yeah, it's super important. And on that, um, the in a in a semi semi competitive environment, what what how do you position yourself? Is it is it yeah. because you have the parking? Is it because you have yeah. the cafeteria so, on the exactly. same floor? So, yeah. Why do we uh, manage to attract people that maybe could have gone to all their co working spaces? The first thing is that there are not enough co-working spaces in the cities where we go. So we have you know, a natural flow of uh, clients that come to us because they cannot find uh, what, what we offer. Um, the way we configure it our, our workspace is, is quite different. We offer individual uh, office and there are not that many uh, co-working spaces in the cities where we are that offer individual uh, you know, office. So sometimes you can find um, an office for two, three, four, five, but we manage to uh, develop many individual ones, which are really attractive. Then our co-working spaces are brand new. We did it with a third party developer. So we have you know, quality furniture, things like this, natural light, this kind of thing. We have the parking. It's something really important in the cities where we are. It wouldn't be the case in Paris, maybe in Lyon or Marseille, but where we are, people come with their car. And it has become impossible, even in second tier city, to park a car in the city center of the city. Yeah. But where we are, you know, we have a huge parking right uh, in front of the co-working spaces. So it's a huge advantage. And we also have all the shops, naturally, in our shopping centers. So the people, they can find a restaurant, they can find a cinema, they, you know, apart from the COVID situation, obviously, but they can find all of these activities, the gym. So they will have everything in one place. It's a one-stop shop for, for everything. Okay. So, yeah, that's it. Okay. And how about the synergies then? Because yeah, so about first, <laughs> the first, so uh, there, uh, I will uh, put two types of synergies for the costs. First, uh, we use the same staff for our co-working spaces than we use for the other activities that we uh, uh, elaborate like uh, for managing the shopping centers for the e-commerce activities for this kind of thing so we have to we we because we need more resources at the opening to market the space but then just to run uh, 30 workstations uh, co-working space it doesn't take uh, one full uh, full-time uh, employment okay so we have synergies on the on the cost and cost side then on the um, on the revenue side we have different type of clients because the first thing is that the spaces in the shopping center where we uh, build the, the, the co-working space are usually not very attractive, commercially speaking, okay? So we won't put it in the best, uh, uh, the best part of the shopping centers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's uh, on another floor, you know, on the first floor, second floor, when you have less clients where it is, much more difficult to uh, to put a retailer. Maybe you can put a restaurant, a gym there, but sometimes difficult. But you don't need the same kind of um, of entrance and same kind of accessibility for a co-working space than for uh, a common shop. So these spaces are, are really um, effective for us because they don't have much value in our book. So we create a lot of value from this. Then we manage to have synergies with our retail activities. For instance, we propose uh, an offer when we give, a, a, let's say, a pop-up shop to a, a startup, for instance, a retail startup where they have a product, they want to market it so they can test it in the shopping centers, you know, um, and they can have a, an office just to work and you know, work on the strategy in our um, co-working uh, um, you know, co-working space. So they can use the retail and the co-working space activities. And another synergy is from our retailers themselves because you know, all the shops in the shopping centers, they have big uh, retailing surface, but they don't have a lot of space behind office just to work for the manager of the shop. They don't have spaces where to work. So we have several uh, retailers who rent an office uh, in the co-working space just to be able to work and to when they have free time during the day and, yeah. to work on this. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, Tom, you, in, in your in your in the paper, your your release, you mentioned some examples, for instance, similarly um, here of shopping centers who partner up with operators. So, um, and I noticed that you um, you, man, you mentioned, for instance, Backless Eagle Lab in some Southampton. Um, what do you see? Do you see that there is this trend of the owner just opening up their own brand, or do you expect more of this deal with existing operators to, to, to go down the line when we see the, this collaboration between the I think it's an inter operators? interesting question. If you, if you think about a lot of shopping center owners, they're good at um, the retail side of things. So if you're bringing in residential or offices or education or health or whatever it might be, sometimes the skill sets are different. Uh, and I think with co-working, what you've got to think about is who you need somebody that's there to manage and curate the proposition. So if the so we, we are seeing examples where um, shopping center owners are taking it on themselves, but we're seeing a lot of collaboration as well. So the Eagle Labs is a really good example. So shopping center owner Elandi, who own uh, about 30 sort of community sort of shopping malls around the country. And they've seen for a while the synergy of retail community uses with other alternative uses. And they bought in the Eagle Labs into a couple of their sites now. So a good example is in Southampton. And what's interesting about Eagle Labs is, is it, it's not just a co-working space it is a co-working ecosystem. So what they're trying to do is to identify um, startups that have synergies of their own industry, or you know, it could be tech. And the point being is that if you're a, a one or two person startup and the other people working in your co-working space are in a similar industry, then you start to get crossover of ideas and that's where you start to build up this ecosystem. Um, and that, I think, is a really clever way of doing the co-working. There is a, a targeted approach to it, if you like. Um, a couple of other examples that are worth picking on. So, um, again, thinking about taking older department store space. And uh, there's Commune in Sheffield, which is a great example, because the department store there was empty for about 10 years, about 80,000 square feet of space. And it was a, a grade-listed um, building that meant that there were very, very tight planning controls on what you could do with that particular infrastructure. Uh, but they've embraced it. The co-working space works well in the existing fabric because unlike a typical city centre office, corporate office, it doesn't need to have the clean sides and the, the, um, the box roofing and the same forms of extraction, actually you can use, you, you can strip out the, the building to its core and that can be fine if, if, if it looks like a cool environment. But what I really like about Commune is that it's a very, very busy work, co-working environment. On the ground floor, they've got a food hall, which is another market that I absolutely love, but that's a conversation for another day. Um, but the two work really well together. And the reason I really like this particular scheme is that the adjacent units that were around this, um, this department store had no occupational interest for a decade, but due to this increasing the footfall, now we see an increase. So it, it actually can help regenerate an area. Okay. Uh, Caroline, I, um, I mentioned in the preparation that we, we were in touch, we, we, we hope we would have uh, an operator with us in the discussion. And actually, we figured out that it's very hard to find corking operators who are already operating from shopping malls already. There's, there are a few, but they were not available. But we have a, one of our friends from um, from Dublin who wrote us, um, and they are they are hosted in a in a shopping mall. And here is what what they say. So, um, on the advantage of being in a shopping mall, they say convenience for members uh, with the restaurants, the shops, etc. The high volume uh, foothold of unsecured new memberships from uh, walk-ins, uh, the buzzing atmosphere, the central um, location for meeting space and events, and the supporting local businesses, as we mentioned with the example of the synergies, uh, with relationship with local cafes and the mall providing, for instance, the, the catering for the events. On the downside, they were mentioning that there was 
the others where with the security, with the front door facing into the mall, it can be challenging for receptionists to ensure that only member access, especially during busy periods. Um, they mentioned the noise. We install acoustic panels in uh, all the rooms and glass in our upper mezzanine level to control the sound and the opening hours, obviously, which is uh, we figure out uh, a big, <laughs> a big element uh, for events, particularly uh, which finish finish um, late. This was managed via booking additional opening hour with the mall and using our backdoor access. But uh, overall, that was their their, their main uh, uh, feedback about being in a shopping mall. How far can the shopping mall adjust and adapt in order to host those kind of activities, Caroline, you think? Um, is, it, is it ready? Uh, are our operators ready to do it? Uh, does it mean that you, you need to build your infrastructure or adapt your infrastructure in order to give different access levels? What's the, what, is there already some thinking about uh, that? that yeah, this, these questions um, are the mo most um, challenging, what we have, the requests of the non-retail usages. So it's co-working, yeah. as you said, accessibility, 24-7 um, uh, usages. So um, this is one of the challenges we have in, in, in the shopping centers because we have, if we are... Um, Yes, if we're doing retail business, um, we don't need uh, at 10 o'clock at the evening uh, customers mm -hmm. inside. Um, but it's also um, a question what we have to, to solve if we, if we talk about entertainment and leisure in shopping centers. In Germany, it's not so known in, in, in UK. And also it's more, it's more known at the moment in shopping centers to stay there in the evening. But these are all the questions we, we have and we um, try to, to, to solve in our teams. What we have done in, in for special objects, if we did, did studies, we have two, two approaches. We at the first time, we, we look at the floor plans and we, we try to put out the, um, the parts of the center which could be used or could be re sensible use for, for these usages. So where could, could we place good access for non-retail users? So, so you have entrance, you have a ad address also for companies who, who like to rent or to operate something. That is the first, first question we, we have in our studies, how in the, uh, where in the center could we place these usages? And then we talk also about which is the relationship between the usages in, in square meter. How many square meter do we need for co-workers or do we need it's a good um, a sustainable um, size of area and these two questions if we if we balance this you came then to a new structure of the building and if you have this new structure with with uh, with the dedicated uh, parts where we can uh, change retail to non-retail then you can start marketing um, and um, having um, having um, yes leasing process or searching for for tenants or for operators because then you can show them the area where where they yeah. are situated that is a situation or that is, that is questions we have to solve before we start the marketing. And that is why we are in, in, in ECE in the phase to be, to be sure how is the stru structure of the shopping center. Not to have the uh, solution at the end to get some co-worker in one part of the center and to say in, in, in five years was, uh, was a wrong, uh, this was a wrong solution and uh, we have to, to, think, uh, to, to think about the remodeling also of this part of the center. So to, to structure all of the floors, this is one uh, challenge we have now, and then we can start the marketing of each area for these non-retail users. And as Clement said, we have always to see it's, it's not a scale up business. It's not a package we can do in 200 shopping center every, in every city the same. We have yeah. always to, to, to show what, what is the city like, what is, what is the request of our customers and also for our investors uh, to find the, the, the mixed use packages at the end. Does it mean also that you have um, you are thinking about innovating in the kind of lease contract you have for that kind of operation? Because we know that the retail a, a, a lease contract for retail is something different in terms of duration, price uh, than something for a, a workplace. So, do you address it in some way, or because I, yeah. I assume that that's also a very big hurdle you might have to face? And yeah, that also for the PNL, mm -hmm. yeah. That is a perspective which I didn't mention yet, the perspective from the investor side, because if we have the discussions with investors, which are at the time, um, 
searching for an alternative with the same value as a retail business with the same contract, the same um, the same rent at the end. This is diff that would be difficult for the future. We 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 look look after these these uh, possibilities, but it's not really and could couldn't be the 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 value at the end the same. Um, for the contract side, we we are prepared to have special contracts also for the the co-working operator. So um, that is one thing we have so like homework we have to do before because we couldn't say this is a retail shopping center we have to restructure it but all of the tenants have to have the retail contract mm, yeah. that would be leading us to to any solutions we have to we have to change and that's where we are prepared prepared to have um, changes as too. Clima, what about this financial dimension um, you, you were mentioning that it, you, you you first days and months in the co-working business why it was pretty successful. It was even a driver, driver of growth as far as you are. Um, how do you, does it make, financially I assume it makes sense, but how do you address it? Is it uh, something, what, what are your takeaways from the experience you have done so far from, from also the investor and, and finance perspective? Okay, so to be honest, uh, at first we thought it would be challenging to do it by ourselves. Maybe uh, it would make, take more time to be profitable that uh, maybe if we had uh, uh, taken a, a third party operator, but what we see, the, the last spaces we opened was in Grenoble in last September, okay, so maybe four months ago, and it is already full and profitable, and for Angers, the other space we have is already profitable as well, so for these small spaces, I'm not sure it is mandatory to have um, to have a, a, an operator uh, because it is, it, it's quite small, so you don't have these many challenges. For the, you were talking about security, about noise, about opening hours. You know, this is something you have to address, you know, city by city, space by space, because it depends where your space is located within the shopping centers, okay? But it's not that big of a problem, you know, you can handle it. So for the value for these small spaces, I would say, uh, if we can take the value for ourselves, it could be better, you know, so I would be glad to to uh, give it to someone else. But for these pieces, okay, let's take the value because we say it's not that complicated. The only thing we needed was, uh, was the uh, IT platform just to make the contract with the coworkers and to have something, you know, like a network when all the coworkers can collaborate together and with which they receive their... Uh, invoice and they can pay uh, directly on it. So this was the only thing that we didn't have, but we could find this on the market. And this is something that uh, the operators could bring you. But if you can take it, you know, just it on the market, it's it's good also. The way we see a, a potential interest in having a, an operator is for bigger spaces because. If we plan, we, we have this plan to open much more spaces. For instance, we have shopping centers with a lot of vacancy. We don't have much, many of them, but we do have one or two. Uh, in these spaces, we say, okay, uh, we could open something much bigger, you know, uh, uh, a co-working space with a hundred, uh, several hundreds of, uh, of workstations. In this case, we say, okay, this is a different, uh, a different job. You know, we have to address it uh, uh, differently and we have to bring a new concept, something really attractive. Uh, and in this city, the, Competition is much more important. So an operator here has a, a lot of sense. And this is something we, we think about. Awesome. We wouldn't be you know, as competitive as we are in the smaller, uh, in smaller, uh, smaller co-working spaces. OK. We are arriving uh, slowly at the, at the end of this conversation. And Tom, what, what's your take on, 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 on this? And, um, in terms of the lease contract and the profitability also of um, these new occupiers, uh, occupier profile, let's say for shopping, for shopping malls. Uh, of course, it's better to have customers than no customer, but does it hurt also the, the traditional business model of these shopping malls? Um, uh, well, yeah, absolutely it does. Um, and I think that goes back to the point of shop, uh, many shopping center owners now needing to think about uh, an alternative business model. Um, I mean, we're seeing, a significant amount of devaluing of retail stock, um, which is very painful, but is necessary. And in many ways, it's possible to feel more positive of looking forward when that has been done. You know, once that decision has been made, 
which is incredibly hard, I accept. But once it's been made, then you look and look forward and you can build upon it. And some of these alternative sectors are, um, particularly if you've got an operator, will pay for longer leases in the retail. Um, we should talk about in retail about having retailers that have a strong covenant, you know, the guarantee of income, but that just doesn't exist anymore. Mm. Um, so diversifying income, I think, is probably the future. Uh, there's just a challenge around how working out what that means for valuation going forward. And I don't think anybody's really cracked it yet. Perfect. Okay. Um, maybe just um, we are at the end of this conversation. It was super, super insightful. Uh, maybe Caroline and Clement and Tom, to, maybe if you have a, a last word you, you want to, to say and share with the audience of, and you thought about the future. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline, <maybe> first. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. Um, I'm looking very positive in the future. So we said the devaluing of these shopping centers is um, has to be stopped. And I'm think, like, thinking at the end, we will have better real estates and um, better for our customers and clients and also for our city centers uh, to bring life in all those back in our city centers. Uh, it is a process. Uh, we have to be careful to to get on the on the right road at this uh, that situation, and I'm I'm very sure that co-working will take place uh, and have have uh, have good opportunities for for these shopping centers. We have to find a good model, a good operating. But I'm very very happy um, to see what's what's going on on that uh, branch for the next uh, next years. Awesome, Clement, maybe yeah, what is the to, to me, my opinion is that co-working is that the, the answer, it's one of the answer and we cannot, you know, put it everywhere because, you know, today everyone does co-working, you know, even my bank here next <laughs> has a co-working space, everyone is doing uh, co-working spaces. So uh, we have to be careful at, uh, okay, how we can differentiate ourselves and always think about the, the big picture. Okay, so my shopping centers, what do, what type of activities do I have? Do I have leisure? Do I have restaurants? Do I have health? Do I have gym? Do I have the co-working space? And to find the right the right mix, but it's not something you can uh, industrialize and, and do the same thing ever, in my opinion. Brilliant. Tom, you have the last word. Um... Yeah, thanks. So um, picking up on a few things that others have said, I, I, I do think there's a huge scope in this market. So if we look at what we've got now, we've got some very, very big operators that tend to be focusing on the regional cities. And then there are very, very small local operators having a go. But uh, as Clement picked up on earlier, then the quality might not be there. Um, and um, there are going to be times when the landlord can take it on because the operation's the right size for them. And other times you need to bring an operator. What, what I think we're crying out for is more operators that are willing to look at those more, um, more suburban and smaller markets um, because we don't have the operators there at the minute. Perfect. Thank you so much again for this great uh, discussion. And uh, it's very promising to see those, those, those moves and uh, this, this collaboration and this mixture of, of different activities and to give a new, a new burst to shopping centers the, uh, we, we used to know and create like village-like kind of environment. That's something that we read a lot also about. And that's it's also valid for co-working space themselves. They try to put themselves as villages and not just only uh, factories or for, for services. And uh, uh, thank you again for, for your time and for, the, um, for, for sharing your experiences and, and, um, and, and, and look at uh, the future and prediction. Um, we hope to see you soon on the hub, the virtual hub, um, anytime, or hopefully maybe at the Corking Europe conference physically in Vienna in December. Uh, we hope to see you there. Thank you again and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.